so quickly we're just going to go over the ship here we're running the fleet advanced escort we're talking about what makes it a good torpedo boat so a couple things that i usually look for in a torp boat would be tactical console seating um i like to have four at least five is great i go with the exploiters here you can see i'm only running four with the bioneural this is not my normal torp tune i would definitely go for five exploiters another thing i like to look at it is tactical bridge officer seating can you fit your spread your high yields tactical team chemo i like to run an omega and a beta if possible and i think maybe the most important part for me is command seating to be able to run concentrate firepower here we could run a three and a two this ability is really very important for tour boats so we could see this ship fits a lot of the requirement it has good seating it has a nice size seating for a gravity well which always helps group them up and spread them gravity well also triggers checkmate if you're running that console wise after tactical a lot of the time it's universal consoles as you'll see here so whatever we have for science and engineering it does not really matter usually how it's broken up um, weapon wise five up front and two or three aft is usually preferable I'd say but having the four three works out nicely now this is the fleet version of the T6 escort the Hestia obviously the C store version will have one less console spot still I would say it would be a good tour boat but the fleet version with the extra console is just going to be a little bit better if you are running this setup for a CCA and you're going for a kinetic killer in CCA the trait that comes on the C store version of this ship is actually very nice and you'll take a look at it here numerical superiority while this trade is slotted you gain damage bonus that increases as more allies target your targeted foe to self 10 percent all the way up to 50 percent all damage based on number of allies obviously in cca that is a really nice trait so overall if you're looking for a tour boat on the fed side and you are not a veteran and have access to the chimera I would say that the T6 Hestia is definitely a nice choice for a tour boat. I'm not sure I would say it's the best because I think that comes down to preference, but this ship would definitely work.
had a set, um, what do you call it, um, a procedure, right? Have a set shock collar, et cetera, all that shit. It's fucking great. All right, so today, like I said, we are talking about the Fleet Advanced Escort, the Hestia. We are running a tour boat on here. Um, the reason we've gone in this direction today is recently uh, I've had a few different fleet mates and whatnot ask me about tour builds, about what's the best fed ship if they wanted to go in that direction. I would usually say the veteran ship, the Chimera, but not everybody has availability to that. Um, and then yesterday I was talking to somebody again about that and he brought it up, so I decided to put together a little build. Um, of something I would do with this ship. This is not my main character that I usually run Torps on, so some things are going to be a little different, but I'll go over that. So, first off, for four weapons, um, you know, these are Torps that, if you've seen other of my vids where I've been running Torps, you see them a lot. First, we're running the Neutronic, where you're running the Enhanced Biomolecular from the Undine rep. And then we're running the Terran Task Force Photon Torpedo. Now, real quick, I do not auto-fire my torpedoes. Some people do. I do not. I would say it's the better way to do it, but, you know, it's definitely a style that you have to get used to. And within the game, I fly a few different styles, science, tactical, you know, beam boats, stuff like that. So, you know, I've never really had the time to sit down and start working on this. If you are going to manually fire, I would say that the order in which you put your torpedoes doesn't really matter because as long as you remember which is where and you're going to decide what and when to fire. Now for me, I've you know tried some different styles because I'm auto firing, so a lot of it sometimes is based on just you know good luck, the right torp going out with the right ability, neutronic would be better with spread, enhanced biomolecular better with high yield. The Terran, I would say that depends on, you know, the health of your enemy because the Terran has that great ability that when, uh, as damage dealt increases, as target's health decreases, up to 200% more damage at 25% health. So, obviously, if you're fighting a tactical cube and he's at 25% health, a nice high yield with the Terran is going to be a crazy max one hit. Um, up front here, I'm running the Terran Task Force Disruptor Dual Heavy Cannon. I usually run this on my main Torp. Um, one of the biggest reasons is to proc Weapon System Synergy. This is the trait off of the Shashar. But I don't have that here. But I ha you know, I do like using the, the two-piece. We'll show you the two-piece set bonus. I'm also running the three. The two-piece is 13.3 projectile. Um, pretty damn nice. The three-piece, I would not say, is something that you have to use. I like using it. I don't know why. I'm not even sure if it's, you know, worth it. Uh, it's the secondary secondary torpedo launcher, as you'll see there. So, um, Then in deflector, we have the 8472, the counter-command deflector. This deflector gives us a little bit of boost to, you know, projectile weapon training. Um, there's other options you could do there. I, I've always liked using that one. The biggest thing here is I'm using Adapted Mako 2-piece. I'm using the shield and the engine. You could use any variation if you want. But the 2-piece here is plus 25% torp damage, so that's really nice. And then for Warp Core, again, you can go in a lot of different directions. I guess Amp still is nice, and the reason I'm using the Temporal is for the Trajector Jump. I really started liking to use that ability on, a, on all kinds of different ships. So In the back... We have two weapons that are pretty much there for set bonuses. We have the Experimental Proton and the Gravimetric. That's mixed with one of the consoles we'll talk about. The two-piece is giving us plus 26.6% photon projectile weapon damage. That is really nice because we have three photons on this, and it's giving us a base 3% crit chance. The three-piece is giving us plus 10% crit severity to photons. Again, we have a good amount of them. And then just a base 10% crit severity to the build. In engineering, we're using the particle stabilizer, the proton particle stabilizer. That is the third piece with those weapons we just showed you. Then we have the bio-neural. Pretty much the reason for this, we're using it for the two-piece. 
little radiation damage, but the real big part is the 20% cooldown reduction to the Neutronic. The console itself gives us a little engine power, uh, shield cap, and a 7% cooldown reduction to bridge officer abilities, which, you know, that's pretty nice. Then we have the third piece of the Terran, the Feral Fluid Hydraulic Assembly. This is giving us negative 0.5 second shared torpedo recharge time, so speeding that up a little. And, you know, we saw the two pieces ready. Science, we have the Disentanglement Suite from the Butterfly Mission. The reason this works out nicely, on a torp boat, you don't need weapon power. You need uh, at least one in weapon power, otherwise your weapons will be disabled and won't fire. But you don't need high weapon power as you do with energy weapons, because the damage of kinetic is not based upon, you know, your energy weapon, uh, your power. So, we have our auxiliary really high, which gives us a nice bit of crit severity and crit chance from this console. Then we're running the dynamic power redistributor. This console, I, I was testing for a while. I was testing timeline stabilizer, and then I was testing the M6 computer. Uh, I just started to start going with this one. It's giving us plus 40% bonus damage, 100% uh, bonus damage resistance, and a lot of hull regen for 20 seconds when activated. I mean, I, I've flown this on high-end aggro builds, and in pug runs, and I don't even need my Kobali console anymore, so this is really powerful. And then last, we have the Rule 62 Multipurpose. This is a low-buy console that's giving us just 20% to mine and torp damage. Um, on this character, it didn't have much to go in its place, but, you know, it's not a bad console. Uh, in Tactical, we have the Bio-Neural Infusion Circuits for the Crit Severity, and then four Vulnerability Exploiters. I started going in the direction of exploiters. Uh, I first saw uh, Odin, who, of course, is the guy who you want to listen to and uh, try to learn from when it comes to tour boats. But, uh, you know, it kind of, after I was thinking about it, kind of made sense, you know, with uh, especially running the Psy Ultimate here, we have a lot of crit chance. And with Torps going in the direction of when they do crit, just getting that massive hit, it seemed to have really worked out. I've gotten some great numbers. Um, again, this character not totally built for it otherwise why not use five and then probably just throw the bio neural in place of the low buy the rule 62 so now we'll look at our skills um it's a basic science ultimate i guess i do have some points in torpedo only two because again this character is like my all around the one i use for different builds and videos and stuff so kind of set up to do it all we are using Temporal Operative and Strategist. We are using Threatening Stance to give us the reduction. For traits, as you'll see, you'll see a lot of the normal ones. Inspiration Leader, Good Day to Die. Um, quickly on, on a Good Day to Die, I mean, probably do a video on it in itself, but just to talk about it real fast. Other than just making it so that you can use your go down fighting, at 100% health, it does have another nice part. So, if I was to take damage and go down to, I, I don't know, I forget what exactly what the minimum number of the max is, but 5%, let's say, and it's giving me the max go down fighting can have, and I hit it there and I get that bonus. And then I have to start healing up because, you know, Invincible only has 8 seconds, I need to start healing back up. Let's say you hit your Kobali. You're on an escort, and it takes you back up to 100%. The damage that you're getting, as I, I mean, I've never tested this too hard, but as if you look at go down fighting, then you mouse over it at the time. The damage it tells you it's giving you at that time shoots way lower and just spikes down. But if you have this trait, then no matter what, the bare minimum it's going to give you, even at 100%, is 66.4 all damage bonus. So, you know, unless I'm wrong there, which I could be, and someone please point it out and tell me, but, you know, it stops the lowest it will cap off as you start to heal back up, so that's nice. Then we have just, you know, projectile training, uh, fleet coordinator, uh, innocuous. We're not really using the threatening stance for threat just for the cooldown reduction, so this helps a little, gives us a little crit severity. Operative. Uh, particle manipulator, we do have the G-Well. And uh, 
the stabilizing resonance beam, uh, self-modulating fire, and then psychological warfare, because we are using a G-01 to give it a little more control. Starship traits have got invincible and tactical analysis. Really nice. Um, again, don't have too many great torpedo traits, not some of the ones I'd have over there on my actual torp tune. So then we have unconventional tactics to give us uh, cat 2 damage bonus when hitting brace for impact. All hands on deck. And then checkmate. So in space rep, we have omega kinetic cutting shearing. We have our crit chance and our crit severity, auxiliary to offense, and then torpedo pre fire sequence. And then we'll look at stations here. This is why I think this, uh, this ship really works out. It does have the command seating. I think the command seating is the, one of the biggest things for torps. Um, after this, I'm going to show you a build I did with the Tier 6 Excelsior. Now, you know, some people might look at it and be like, oh, well, I want a faster escort. And some people's flight style and their play style might work really well with that. But for me, when I look for the torp boat, it's really the command seating is the biggest thing. I've been able to get great numbers out of some bigger ships. Um, I'll go into that when I talk about the Excelsior. But, you know, so it's definitely a big thing that we can get our concentrate firepower when marked foes damaged by torpedoes, 20% extra kinetic damage with 100% shield pen, uh, and then grants a torpedo high yield to one damager and resets torpedo cooldown. So it's a really great ability for these kind of boats. Um, I have an engineering team I'm using just as my one heal to trigger my strategist. I am using one maintenance engineer to bring down the cooldown, so it's almost right at 22 seconds, so it's just two seconds past what I need for strategist. Um, tactical seating wise, I'm able to get my uh, Omega, my Torp Spread 3, Chemosite, which, you know, it's nice. Tactical team, I got my High Yield 1 and my Beta 1. This could be swapped out, the high yield, you can get the three, and the spread, you can get the one. I'm a sucker for spread. I love the visual of it. Uh, and then in science, we get our gravity well, which will trigger our checkmate and destabilize your resonance beam for a little debuff, and then our hazard emitters. So pretty basic there. We'll take a look at the DOS that we're running for this setup. A damage warfare specialist Borg. Um, two DOFs to reduce the recharge time on torpedoes. I had one blue projectile weapons officer for stacking crit severity, so I went there. The maintenance engineer we talked about, and the emergency con hologram, which, you know, for a, a lot of builds, this is just an incredible doff. So, uh, and that, you know, and that's basically it. So, that's our build for the Hestia. Okay, uh, there was a couple of questions I had. This is uh, Shadow Leopard 64 here. Um, I've been running with you for a, for a while now, and I'm, I'm actually kind of interested in this because I haven't really played around too much with uh, torpedoes all that much because I was always taught that, well, <laughs> you want to out DPS anybody with torpedoes, but clearly there is still a good use for them. Uh, you've been able to squeeze out some uh, pretty interesting numbers using the torpedoes, and, and uh, I'm actually intrigued as to how you're uh, getting along with this, but um, first off, I guess... Um, one thing uh, that I would like for you to elaborate on is, I know you said you had, uh, there's some more different choices. What are the uh, alternatives for, say, uh, the deflector and uh, warp core that you were mentioning? What would be the next um, different piece that you would probably choose to give uh, people maybe some flexibility in, in options uh, that they can uh, use in that build? Yeah, gotcha. All right, so in the deflector range, I guess... There's a lot of different versions of a torp boat. There's just a straight tactical. There's Psy Torp, which a lot of people like to mix together. If you were going with some exotic abilities as your side, you could always run the Solanay Deflector for the EPG. Or you could run the Adapted Mako Deflector with the Impulse. You'd still be getting your Adapted Mako 2-piece. And then you could run uh, a Shield that you might want. Um, for a Warp Core, you could run... The Delta Alliance one, especially if you've decided to go with the Quantum Phase Torpedo, the Delta Alliance Warp Core will give you um, Drain Expertise, which helps with the Quantum Phase. For Shield, you could go with the Temporal, if, especially if you're going in that direction. Again, that Temporal Shield gives you Drain. Um, so there's just there's a few different ways to go for it. Um, 
You could also just go Temple Warcore if you wanted to keep that way, and then go Temple Shield and get the two-piece, which is a 25% to damage over time abilities. I, again, if you're mixing a Psy Torp kind of setup. So, for an actual Torp, um, deflector-wise, I'm not sure if there's anything else directly that would be useful over that, but it all depends on what secondary range you're going for. If it's just a straight Torp boat, or if you're mixing in with Exotic Psy, or stuff like that, so... Okay, that sounds great. I, I like a couple of those options that you can uh, be a little bit more flexible in those uh, areas. Uh, one other thing I have um, that I thought I'd ask is um, that board uh, dock, um, where would you find that one? I know that uh, a lot of the uh, board related stuff is either um, C store or, or whatever. Uh, I'm trying to figure out where do you acquire that particular dock that you were mentioning? Uh, Dlyrene, it's a Space Warfare Specialist. You can buy these off the exchange. Um, you can get the packs out of Infinity boxes. I'm actually not sure. I believe, probably I would imagine the Tholian lockbox is where the, uh, where these originally fell from because all the Warfare Specialists, or the majority I've seen, are Tholian. So, you know, you could get them out of there, or you could just pick them up straight on the exchange. Last time I looked, uh, the Borg one is the more ex the most expensive. It was around 10 mil. There are other options if you're doing other maps. Um, most people really just go in this direction because the Borg the Borg maps are obviously the ones people parse. But you know you can get other ones like Undine, uh, Tholian. I use a Tholian one for a CCA. If I was going to run a Torpo and uh, go into CCA, even though the crystal is not Tholian. If you throw a nice G-Well down, you suck in all those stolen ships as your secondary DPS, so it'd be nice to have that. But yeah, so lock boxes, I would think either Tholian, I know Infinity, and on the exchange. Okay, that at least narrows that down a little bit. Uh, and I noticed that since, uh, obviously today, we're, we're kind of uh, doing a couple of, of things. One on the Excelsior uh, ship that you're doing this, this build on, and of course the Hestia here. Um, I know that uh, it seemed like you're a little bit split on um, which ship is either better or should be um, considered uh, higher or lower than the other. Uh, obviously, I know that uh, maneuverability uh, on how fast or quick something turns, and, and obviously a cruiser is going to be a lot slower than an um, escort or whatever, but is there anything that's really kind of either hanging it up for you as really narrowing down a final choice, or are they both just really that good, and why? So That's actually a great question. So, uh, for any other player, I would probably always tell you to go after the fast, more maneuverable ship. I'm not sure exactly what it is on my end, but with my actual Torp character, it's a ROM. The Romulans have a version of the Chimera, Chimera, the veteran ship, and I was using that for Torps. It's identical in console layout and bridge officer stations, and I was doing really well with that. And then I started testing just the bigger ships, just to see, have some fun, see what I could do with Torps. And now my actual torpedo built is the Shashar Dreadnought, or the Thray Dreadnought, which is the new prototype one for the Romulans. For whatever reason, if it's just my playstyle, I don't think it's the ship itself, but my playstyle works better with these bigger ships or whatnot, but I'm getting better damage out of these big dreadnoughts. Um, and same thing, I was able to take out the tactical scimitar, the command ships. So, for me, I, w I wouldn't say in this case the Excelsior is equal to the Hestia. I would say I was able to get 120 out of the Excelsior uh, and about like 130 out of the Hestia, so they sound pretty balanced. But I would always probably tell people to go in the direction of the Hestia. I think it's more maneuverable. It gives you a lot more options. It has the better, the better tactical seating, first of all. It makes it a lot easier. So for somebody just getting into it, I would definitely point them in that direction first. Okay, so you're, you're, you're saying that basically it's kind of like maybe um, a 60-40 split or, or something like that. In, in more of a favor of the uh, Hestia in this case. Um, so it, 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 is my understanding correct that they're, they're pretty damn evenly matched? It's just uh, more come down to maybe play, uh, direct play style? 
Is that what uh, you're kind of trying to tell us here on this? I, I would say they're closer than you would think, yeah. You know, I, I would still go in this direction, far more tactical seating, um, and just I think it would be far easier to start learning how to do a tour boat on this. But, yeah, to be honest, they're they're closer than you would think. And, you know, I'll kind of go into that when I talk about the Excelsior, about what I look for in a tour boat. But, you know, pretty much has, you know, certain things that both share in common that make them pretty good for me. Well, a lot of people may recognize the Excelsior, obviously, from the original series movies uh, that was made. I believe the Excelsior was a part of the search for Spock, I believe, at the beginning. And, of course, the Hestia was featured in Star Trek Voyager episode. I don't remember the exact title of that one. Um, but uh, both are recognizable. Personally, um, I think the Hestia is a little bit cooler visually, just largely because, uh, especially in episode, how it separates. But I know I digress. Uh, this isn't what this video is about. I appreciate you, uh, Aponte, for explaining all of this and, and uh, giving us the information that you have to, to share with us on these videos. I've enjoyed them immensely, and thank you for teaching me something here today. Absolutely. And like always, I learned all this from watching the person I consider the master on the tour boat. So if you want a really in-depth look at this to really learn even more than I could put out, because still he's miles ahead, go check out Odinite on YouTube and you'll really learn a lot. So just quickly here at the end, I wanted to uh, talk about the Fleet Advanced Heavy Cruiser. This is the T6 Fleet Excelsior. Now, the whole point of this video was we were talking about a good fed ship that was not the chimera the veteran ship for a tort build now to me a ship for a tort build i don't necessarily look for speed i don't look for maneuverability like an escort i know to some people that sounds crazy because torps are more forward firing weapon like dual beams or cannons and you would think I'd want to stick with escorts and maneuverable ships. Some of the best luck I've had is with bigger ships, like the Sashar, which is actually the ship that I have my highest numbers in Torps with, um, up in around 180k. I've had good luck with the new prototype Dreadnought for Romulans, the Thray. I've tested the Command Cruisers. I've tested the Tactical Scimitar and have gotten consistent uh, high numbers, over 100, 120, maybe 130k. Now, for me, the maneuverability and speed is not a huge factor. Now that is just my style. That's my flight style, my play style, that it just works for me. But one of the things I, I really wanted to stress was, and I'll, I'll put up the parts of the run I got with this build right here was, the biggest thing for me, and I talked about it a little before, but just to really show it that, you know, the ship matters, but the biggest part of the ship that matters to me is the tactical seating, and then, again, the bridge officer stations, which, again, we have our command, and this one is a little lighter tactical-wise, so, you know, I'm only fitting my spread three, a tactical team, and a high yield one, so, you know, off the bat, that's, well... You know, how's that going to work out so well? I've been able to fit Concentrate Firepower 3 and 2, just like I did on the Hestia. And what I have here is I have so much engineering that I was able to fit in Structural Integrity Collapse 3 and 1. And now I'm able to use the 3 with Concentrate Firepower 3 and the 1 with Concentrate Firepower 2. Now, on the different ships where I've been able to do this, I I've seen some great results from it. Science-wise, I don't have my G-Well. I have only two spots, one for ensign hazard emitters, and then I'm using scramble sensors just to proc checkmate again. But, you know, just wanted to, uh, you know, show it, this build. That it, I mean, it's very similar. I did decide to go with my four weapons up front. Can't put the Terran cannon on here, so I did put the beam and back. Still have the experimental proton for the three-piece set that we were talking about. And then I just went with uh, two fleet disruptors. Figured just to get the negative uh, damage debuff from the disruptor proc. At the same time, if you had weapon system synergy, these would also help to trigger that. So, but overall, I mean, I would not say that I'd recommend this ship over the Hestia. 
by any means. I know the majority of players aren't wacky like me and like bigger, slower ships. But, you know, I just kind of wanted to show you the build, show you the parse. Uh, the difference is very light, and obviously it could just be anything from the team, how long it took. There's all kinds of different factors in DPS, so they could have been closer, if not this ship done better, you know, in one run compared to another. Just to show you that, for me, I find that the tactical console slot, just as long as I can get at least my four, get my crit severity up there, and then have that command seating. That, for me, that is the biggest thing. So, overall, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment or find me in-game at pont15pont15. Thanks.